Welcome back to Trading Matters, the podcast by OCBC Securities. In this show, we're focused on hunting down interesting market movements to help you become more opportunistic with your capital. I'm your host, Reggie, aka your chief financial coconut, and this week we double down on China with PBOC holding rates steady while the Fed actually made a historical move to increase its interest rates by 75 basis points. How are these changes going to affect companies like Bank of China and Ping An Insurance? And for all of you out there, did you know that the Hong Kong dollar actually moves closer alongside the US dollar? For all that and more, stay tuned. So CK, tell us what happened last night. <laughs> actually, a lot has happened. Uh, and it's not over yet. It's not yes, over yes, yet. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Last night was, you know, 2 a.m. Singapore time. The US Fed, all were about you, their wait, meeting. Wait, were you up at 2 a.m.? Uh, I was. I oh was. my god, you should get a pay raise, huh? OCBC, you must <laughs> listen to this, uh, right? This, oh yes, about the Fed, what, what, what happened? So, I mean, the big thing is really just, you know, interest rates, inflation, interest rates, inflation, again and again, we've, talk, uh, we've talked about it so many times, right? Mm, mm, mm. But yesterday was one of the meetings where there was action, uh, in that sense. So, the action being the Fed decided to raise rates, and they raised not just one hike, not just two hikes, but they did three hikes. Yeah, okay. So CK, like like you've said, right, we've been talking about inflation, rates, recession, you know. Uh, so so what is this latest update going to affect our thesis? Purely because so much of the market's attention right now is on the actions of central banks. You know, cast their, cast their votes and, and, and move the interest rates accordingly. So uh, because so much attention this week has been on the central bank policy and movements, uh, there's been a lot of uncertainty in the markets as to where that will hit. And like I mentioned, uh, one of the big things in the market was actually because previously, I mean, Jerome Powell came out to say 50 basis points, not looking at 75. And after the inflation number came out, but the inflation number came out at a period of time when they had their blackout period. So they couldn't even say anything uh, to kind of confirm, deny or guide the market much in that sense. A lot of attention, uncertainty from the markets. Uh, and just when the rates came out, actually, you can see that in the price action also of the S&P 500, right? It, it, it's so volatile because people are trying to digest all of that information and nobody is really quite sure, like, is this bad for markets? Is this good for markets? Is this expected by markets as well? Yeah. And then on PBOC, what, what, what's so interesting about PBOC? What, what did they do? How did they do differently? You know? So the PBOC actually came out with their kind of uh, decision or meeting before the US Fed announced their 75 basis point hike. So at that point in time, everyone was kind of unsure, you know, are they going to stick to the 50 they promised, but then now things have changed. Are they going to do 75, which market expects? And the PBOC did absolutely nothing. So they did not move any rates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. That is a move that is strategic in itself, right? Uh, so market is actually anticipating that, you know, they didn't do anything because they feel like for them, at least for the local China situation, uh, it's not so much an issue about, I mean, some, some people are actually putting out reports out there saying that them not doing anything is not an issue about the rates themselves. They, they don't see a need for them to cut it because for them, it could be something different. It could be a demand problem uh, rather than, you know, about the cost of borrowing in that sense. Mm. So it's kind of a wait and see approach that they adopted in that sense. Because whatever they do also affects things like your exchange rates, your, your Chinese yuan against the US dollar. And uh, they wanted to hold that steady in that sense. Yeah. And, and I think for our listeners, right, we have to vividly remember that the PBOC didn't cut all the way down. Well, I mean, the government has come in to, you know, promise some form of policy support. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, it does seem like they are being a little bit more cautious. So the last time that they cut some of their rates, they have multiple rates, by the way. Not just one single rate that everyone looks at. But the last time they did some kind of uh, rate cut, you could say, they were quite cautious and they haven't so far. Uh, so in a sense, that allows you to, to catch a glimpse of what they are looking at, which is they want to support the economy. Uh, but at the same time, they are not going to go all in. You know, This is not like them throwing the kitchen sink in and saying, okay, we're going to go all in. Because, uh, I mean, there have been precedents of that not really turning out well, right? So, so maybe yeah. they are a bit more cautious <laughs> in the area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And by extension, then you start to see some of the rallies, right? I think today we want to talk a little bit about some of these stocks, right, in, in the in the Chinese market. All right, so what do you have for us? Well, today we actually have two stocks in uh, listed in Hong Kong. So we are looking at Bank of yes. China Hong Kong, and we are looking at mm. Ping An Insurance. Bank of China Hong mm. Kong, subsidiary of Bank of China, but the Hong Kong arm, so actually focus on Hong Kong. And then Ping An Insurance is listed H shares, A shares, so both in Hong Kong as well as in China. So that one definitely related. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. And we're going to be looking at these two stocks because uh, for different reasons, we'll go into that in a bit of detail. But they have actually been exposed to things like your interest rates by the US, things like your Chinese stock market rallies as well. Do you see any difference between Hong Kong and Shanghai, Hong Kong and Shenzhen? Uh, you know, like, like uh, is there actually difference when a company lists in Hong Kong and a company lists in mainland directly? Oh, for sure. I mean, when you talk about like listing in Hong Kong, you are so much more exposed to the international market as compared to if you are listing in, in China or on the mainland as A-shares. So uh, the exposure to the domestic market, the exposure to the international market, and not to mention, of course, uh, one of the things we'll be talking about today is uh, because of interest rate policy in the US, how that affects Hong Kong and by extension, companies listed in Hong Kong because uh, the Hong Kong dollar is still managed and pegged to the US dollar. So there is that aspect of currency and interest rates that need to be taken into account. And so in the case of Bank of China, the Hong Kong side, BOC, Hong Kong, because of what the US Fed is doing, they're raising rates. The Hong Kong side, if they want to maintain that currency pack, they need to do something about their own interest rates as well. They need to defend their currency pack in that sense. And as a result of that, you will see Hong Kong rates also having to almost follow suit. So, but, but let's be clear. So BOCHK, which is the one we're talking about, it's not BOC. Yes, it's not. Just to be clear, BOCHK, yes. we are talking about 2388 Hong Kong. Yeah, okay. which is it's different clear, from Bank clear. of China, <laughs> listed yes, in Hong yes. Kong. Yeah. So then how is the Hong Kong jurisdiction following suit with the US and, and how is it then affecting uh, BOCHK? The basic idea is if the US raises their rates, Hong Kong is pressured to also follow suit in order to keep their currency in check. And with Hong Kong raising their own rates, that would affect Hong Kong exposed Bank of China Hong Kong, which is the, the whole thing about interest rates rising, uh, affecting your financial stocks or your bank stocks as well. Yeah, It also directly affects mortgages. Is that, is that what, I, what I hear? Yes, is that how, absolutely. Is that how absolutely. Hong Kong works also? I think that's how, <laughs> broadly speaking, banks and I mean, whether it's Singapore, mm. whether it's Hong Kong, whether it's US, things like your interest rates will definitely affect your borrowing and your, your home loans and mortgages as well. Mm. So, I mean, even here in Singapore, for example, uh, there'll be some pressure to also manage the currency, manage the interest rates in Singapore when the US does something because the US is such a big player overall. And so your Singapore banks or your Hong Kong banks they would be impacted by any rate rises or, or, or increases like what we have seen. Uh, and then the question then is how are they impacted when you balance out different factors? So in the case mm -hmm. for Bank of China, Hong Kong, right, the two factors that I mentioned briefly earlier, uh, one of that is about profit margins. So any rise in rates, especially such a huge rise of 75 basis points in the US, that would definitely affect your margins and it's whether or not they can follow suit and keep up in that sense. So on one hand, you have margins, profitability, and generally financial stocks, bank stocks, we talked about it before, they tend to do well in a high interest rate environment. But on the flip side, when you're talking about things like, okay, recession fears, you're talking about things like uh, slowing demand for, for home loans or mortgages, um, that's where your profits also suffer on the downside. Although your margins might be higher, on the other hand, if there's less demand for your home loans, they might just net everything off in the end. So it does depend mm -hmm. on how both ends actually come in to, to kind of tussle and, and see what really at the end of the day is the impact on your bank. So these are the two areas for BOC Hong Kong uh, that I think are really directly impacted by interest rates and by any slowing of growth, any slowing of home loan demand, and consequently, of course, the eventual impact on your bottom line. Yeah. How is BOC Hong Kong doing then with this situation? Like, are they still growing their business? So quite interestingly, actually, we have seen how the stock has been outperforming the broader market over the past few days. Yeah, so whether or not that's specific to the past few days or whether or not it's a broader trend, it does seem to be, you know, trying to find some ground, whether or not previously in a downtrend, now trying to, to build up into an uptrend. There has been, like, like I said, you know, sort of that confusion between uh, or, or trying to indecision, trying to figure out whether or not the stock would, would experience more tailwinds than headwinds, whether or not it would experience more benefits to its profit or, or otherwise any potential impact of, of the recession fears that come in. Uh, but that said, uh, broadly speaking, actually over the past few days, 
the Bank of China Hong Kong stock has been actually outperforming the broader Hang Seng Index. And so it's actually one of the leaders over the past few days. And so we see it actually on a gradual uptrend right now, uh, steadily heading up, but at the same time, of course, not one straight, one line up. Yeah, but instead actually experiencing some volatility because of the total uncertainty in the interest rate environment, at least over the past few days. Cool, interesting. And then and then the other stock that we want to talk about is Ping An Insurance. Are they the largest or one of the largest? I think they're the largest, China? but maybe not the yeah. largest life insurer because they do have okay. their arm into like, you know, property and casualty and other uh, areas mm-hmm. of insurance, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, so so what what is so interesting about, about Ping An Insurance that you want to share with us today? Well, I think the interesting thing for Ping An Insurance actually, or maybe a quick introduction to insurance names exposed to China, mm-hmm. uh, is that actually insurance is an area that is quite heavily exposed to the broader market sentiment. And why that is so is because they actually get a portion of their income as investment income. So when the stock market does well, investment Uh, income comes in and generally the stock does better. Uh, Stock market not doing so well, then investment income is affected and the stock doesn't do as well as well. So it it is quite cyclical, quite exposed to the broader stock market. And actually, the impact of that is something that we have seen over the past few days. So uh, we talked about how there were some funds switching into China, how China has outperformed the broader global markets as well as in the US, uh, because some people were looking at it from a valuations angle, looking at it from an interest rate monetary policy divergence angle. And so for the past few days, actually, the Chinese stock market has been doing well. And we have seen the insurance names actually jump. We have seen Chinese brokerages jump. We know what you're going through. Mm. There has been some positive sentiment on the mainland and, and in Hong Kong as a result of that to some of these Chinese exposed names. So it's riding very much on what's happening in China and in the mainland stock markets as well. So essentially, I think for all of you listening that you don't quite understand the insurance business, right? They sell you all these policies, they gather the premium, they take the premium and they invest. Right, that is that is essentially their their core business, right? And then with the the way they manage the risk, as long as there's a net income for them, then that's their profit, lah. Essentially, that's how that's how it works, right? Yeah, broadly speaking, investment broadly income speaking, is what they yes. what they reinvest and do with the the premiums. But one other mm. aspect also for Ping An is that when it comes to premium income, there's also been an uptick of that. So it's also mm. riding on you know the broader Chinese economy, any reopening, any positive economic data that's coming in, uh, part of that positive sentiment has translated into higher premiums, at least for the first quarter for Ping An. Yeah. So when it comes to this kind of long-term fundamental views, I think the analysts and the market has actually spoken about the kind of outlook for, for Ping An. And we're actually looking at how the Bloomberg 12-month analyst consensus you still are, you're still looking at double digit upside potentially or return potential to to these target prices as well but when you're talking about trading activity that's not going to just suddenly come in uh, instantly you know, of course yeah <laughs> so, okay that, that's cool that so in 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 closing for today you know focus on china is, is there any other things you want to add specific to the china story one of the reasons why we look at bank of china hong kong and also at ping an insurance uh, it's kind of just to to show how things that are happening on a global level, like your, your Fed policy. It, it looks like it's focused on the US, right? But if yeah. if we extend it to you know how that affects your exchange rates to Hong Kong and the Hong Kong policy, and, and then it makes sense how Bank of China Hong Kong is actually affected. Uh, same thing, you know, what happens in China and the stock market, how that kind of trickles down to insurance companies and your Hong Kong listed shares for Ping An. So so in a sense, like I think. Every time you look at a stock, it's also good to find out, you know, what factors are it exposed to and, and things that happen on a macro factor a kind of level. It, I guess it's important for you to, you know, kind of to dig a little bit deeper and look at a stock yeah. and, and not just, oh, okay, you know, Hong Kong is Hong Kong, China is China, but actually I'll kind of to expand a little bit to see how macro things like US Fed policy affects individual stocks that seem to be unrelated at the start, yeah. Mm, but they, they should have a term for it called the fat tremor right? <laughs> it's like the earthquake there then like tremor tremor far out into Japan far out into Hong Kong to Japan everywhere things, yeah right? to everywhere <laughs> yeah. yes yes and, and we, we didn't talk about Japan right maybe next week we can, can unpack a little <laughs> bit about, about the Japanese is crazy right but but we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens then thank you thank you for spending time today with me thank you CK and thank you for all of you for tuning in weekly Thanks, see you next Rashid. week yeah 
Hey, thank you for tuning in weekly with us at Trading Matters, a podcast by OCBC Securities. If you want to be even faster in following latest market insights done by the team at OCBC Securities, you should visit iocbc.com slash trading matters for market insights on Singapore, China, Hong Kong, and the US, and a lot of the stuff that we couldn't cover on the show today. This show is jointly produced by the team at The Financial Coconut and OCBC Securities. We hope you become a more astute trader following our weekly show. And we want to hear from you. Join our ecosystem, events, and all that stuff. Details in the description below. I will see you next week. Also, contents of this podcast are intended for general information only and should not be construed as recommendation or solicitation to invest in any financial products. All investments are subjected to risk. Before investing, you should conduct your own self-assessment and seek independent financial advice. For the full disclaimer, check out iocbc.com slash trading matters. Also, like, share, subscribe. Huh? Like, share, subscribe. See you next week.